सो फ्रेंड्स इन आवर एम यू क्लास फॉर रूरल्स देर आर सम क्वेश्चन आज ऑन द टॉपिक कॉल्ड पिस्टन एंड कनेक्टिंग रॉड सो द क्वेश्चन आज आर एस फॉलोज ओवरऑलिंग ऑफ पिस्टन एंड कनेक्टिंग रॉड चेक्स ऑन पिस्टन चेक्स ऑन कनेक्टिंग रॉड सो दिस आर द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन विच आई हैव कवर्ड इन दिस वीडियो सो प्लीज वॉच द वीडियो टिल द एंड सो मूविंग टूवर्ड्स आवर फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन ओवरऑलिंग प्रोसीजर ऑफ पिस्टन एंड कनेक्टिंग रॉड सो बिफोर ओवरऑलिंग वी शुड प्रिपेयर सम टूल्स सो दीज आर द टूल्स विच वी रिक्वायर एट द टाइम ऑफ ओवरऑलिंग ऑफ पिस्टन एंड कनेक्टिंग रॉड सो दीज आर द ड्राॅइंग आउट टूल्स सो आफ्टर प्रिपेयरिंग द टूल्स वी विल पुल आउट द पिस्टन एज यू कैन सी सो इन आवर प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट रिमूवल ऑफ सिलेंडर हेड सो आफ्टर रिमूविंग द सिलेंडर हेड वी विल remove this piston so before removing the piston we should remove the protection ring which is at the top of the liner turn the flywheel and set the piston 80 to 90 degree before tdc now we should support the liner for supporting the liner we will use liner supporting tool so this tool is used so that liner is not floating we will fix the nut the tightening nut so as the liner supporting tool is been fixed now we will fix the protection ring removal tool so we will keep the taper part above so once the tool is been fixed we will now turn the flywheel and as you can see the piston will come up due to which this piston ring will be removed easily so we should turn the flywheel smoothly now we will remove all the tools and we will remove the protection ring now we will move towards the lifting of the piston so before lifting the piston we will clear all the carbon deposit present on the liner and top of the piston so as a safety now before pulling out the piston and fixing the eye bolt you will clean the eye bolt tightening space so that eye bolt is fixed properly so there is no issue or problem at the time of lifting so now as you can see we will fix the eye bolt now with the help of crane hold the piston and loosen the connecting rod bolt and remove the metal cap so that the piston can be pulled out so these are the connecting rod bolt now remove the metal cap as you can see after removing the bolts we will remove the metal cap now pull the piston smoothly up and remove metal from upper part of the crank ring so we should have where we should prevent uh, so that uh, this part is not falling in the crankcase so now smoothly lift the piston and we should do it smoothly so that the connecting rod does not touch the liner and make some damage to it so once the piston is out we will remove all the carbon deposit on the liner so at some regular interval we have to do liner calibration so for performing the liner calibration we require a tool known as inside a micrometer with a extension bar and a template so this is a inside micrometer with a template so first we will fix the template so that we are getting accurate reading and now we will fix the inside micrometer 
we will take the readings on the two sides half port and star port and port now we'll move towards disassembly of piston and the connecting rod so for this assembly of this piston and the connecting rod we have to remove this gudgeon pin so in some manuals it is also mentioned as a piston pin so for removing this gudgeon pin we have to remove the circ clip as you can see we are removing the circ clip and after removing you can see this gudgeon pin is out now remove the piston rings Now turn the piston upside down and remove the cooling chamber of the piston. So after disassembling all the parts of the piston like piston pin, piston connecting rod and all we will check all the part and maintain it according to the limits. Now we will remove all the carbon deposit and the scales in the cooling chamber of the piston. After cleaning the piston, we will do die penetration test and we will check for any cracks. So this die penetration test is for the top of the crown and the grooves of the rings. Now we will take measurement of each part of the piston and we will maintain it according to our limit provided us in the manual. So I made a detailed video on this and uploaded on the marine helpboard about the checks on the piston. Now we will move towards the connecting rod. Checks on connecting rod. So there are basically three checks which we should do at the time of overhauling of connecting rod. So the checks are as photos. Checks for OPLT. Checks for bending. Check the serration at the bottom and bearing. So now we will discuss about the check for OLT. For that we need to remove the pin and tighten the nut at required torque by hydraulic check and check the OLT after that. So for this we have maximum OLT allowed is 0.05 mm. So for measuring the OLT we have a formula OLT equal to A plus B upon 2 minus C. For these values we have to measure according to the figure as given we should measure AA, BB and CC using inside micrometer and then we have to put that value in this formula and we will get the OLT of the corn rod. So OLT is taken after tightening corn rod bolts but without keeping bearing in the place. So we should not keep the bearing at the place at the time of tightening to check the OLT. So this was the procedure how we will check the OLT of the connecting rod. Now moving towards our second check we have to check in this that whether our connecting rod is bent or not. So for that we will take a very fine rod and put that rod in the drill passage which was given for the flow of oil for the lubrication of the piston. If it moves inside the passage without any restriction or it goes freely then everything is okay. So this was the check for the bending. Now moving towards our third check. So the third check is check for serration at the bottom end bearing. Third and the most important thing that you need to check is the connecting rod serration which can take the shear stress. So this serration takes the shear stress of the connecting rod so we need to check it properly. So for checking the serration we need to perform a die penetration test. So friends keep watching the video I will show you how we will do die penetration test and friends this topic is very important checks on the connecting rod is very important as per your MEP and motor rolls it is, has been asked many a times. Now moving back to our video. So now we will check for the scratches or any corrosion at the connecting rod bottom end and the top end. So these are the metals of the bearing we will check for any scratches and the sliding surface also we will check and we will check that any other foreign material is not embedded in it. Now we will check for the connecting rod for that we will use die penetration test on the serration of the connecting rod and the bolts of the connecting rod for any cracks. So there is one question asked about the connecting rod bolt whether they need to be changed if they are in good condition also. So for that the answer is that yes we should change the connecting rod bolt at the time of the interval given by the manufacturer. Now check 
the metal thickness of the bearing by using the outside ball micrometer so after all the checks now we need to assemble the connecting rod and the piston back so we should tighten the connecting rod to bolt by specified angle given so there are some marks on the connecting rod which we should match at the time of tightening of the connecting rod with the bolts so these are the connecting rod bolts on that also there are certain marks apply some lubricating oil on the connecting rod bolts now apply some silicone paste on the bolts now we will fix the metal cap back with the help of connecting rod bolt as you can see so the tightening of the connecting rod bolt should be by a specified angle which has been given now with the help of tightening wrench we will tight the bolts of the connecting rod So now after tightening of the connecting rod bolt we will put a set mark and we will dismantle the metal cap so this is the method how we put the metal cap and connecting rod bolt at the time of assembly of the connecting rod at the crank pin now we will clean fix the chamber cooling chamber of the piston as you can see will renew all the bolts so once we have fixed the cooling chamber now we will fix all the rings back to the piston one by one as you can see this is the garter spring so now we will fix the ring as per the order this is the second ring as it is on it 2t so it means the second ring from the top after fixing this we will fix now t1 the top ring now we will move the cut mark 120 degree apart from each other so that proper sealing action is there as you can see we are moving it 120 degree apart from each other by keeping in mind the marks provided on the piston we will put back the piston pin fix the piston pin circlip Now we will set the crank pin metal bearing at its place as you can see. Now we will lift the piston up by the help of eye bolts. So now fixing back of the piston is easy because we have to follow the same procedure as we have taken out the piston so we'll follow the reverse section of that procedure So now with the help of flywheel we will turn the flywheel and we will check that the crank pin is properly at its place so that piston can be put back.
so as you can see piston is not going inside now with the help of resin hammer we will put the piston inside so once the piston has reached its position now we will fix the metal cap for the connecting rod so this procedure we have already discussed that how to put the metal cap of the connecting rod by applying the lube oil and the silicon paste so as you can see we will fix the metal cap after fixing it we will put the connecting rod bolt so we have to keep in mind about the marks provided on the connecting rod bolt and the connecting rod metal cap So once we have fixed the metal cap now we will check the sliding motion by the help of a screwdriver as you can see so if the con rod is not sliding so we will dismantle it and again fix and in the last we will fix the protection ring back so friends this was the video and if this video was helpful please like and share the video and subscribe my new channel marine help post